Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. It's good to see you guys. So, uh, anyway, let's pray and we'll get started. Father, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for always being with us and always being faithful and, and always being true. And we thank you, Father, because of that, you never fail. And in that, we can rest and we can have our peace and we can get through whatever we're going through. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, what an exciting world we live in. <laughs> right? I'm telling you, this year is not going to be boring. <laughs> right? Life's never going to be boring. We're, we're going to be good, you know? And so, sometimes though, all this stuff comes on top of you and then it feels really heavy and then you start getting tired. And the moment you start getting tired is when you kind of let your guards down. You guys hear what I'm saying? And so, so with all the stuff going on, you can get really tired in our flesh. But, but the key is, is not to get tired. There's a great philosopher um, that's very well respected, especially in Texas. He used to coach the Dallas Cowboys. His name was Jimmy Johnson. And he said this, he said, Don't get tired. Tired makes cowards of us all. And see, what happens is when we um, get tired, we lose heart. Right? Anybody remember the, the lion, or was it the lion that didn't, didn't have a heart and was afraid of everything? You know? But we're not those kind of people. We have a heart, right? And so we're not going to get tired. And it's impossible to get tired when you're resting. Do you hear what I'm saying? So God's called us when you're... He's like, come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. See, we're in a season and a time where we can't afford to be tired, right? We can't afford to be weary and heavy laden because God's called us for this time. God's called us to be here at this time, at this moment in history. And, and instead of running from it and being weary, we need to embrace it and say, God, you created me for this time and this moment. You, from the foundations of the earth, I was ordained to be here for this time and this moment. This is the times that make legends, that, that make us great. And so I'm choosing to be excited about this time, right? Now, I wasn't earlier this week. <laughs> right? So we had just been through quite a deal with getting Linda healed up and and then all the stuff in the world is compiling and there's things that I want to do and I'm so restricted for what I really see that God wants to do and the things we can do and I was frustrated and on top of that, um, we go to the doctor and um, Linda's got some allergies so they had to change their, her diet. So they changed the word. She can't eat eggs, dairy... Um, sugar, I mean everything that a normal person eats, bread, can't have any of that. So I was like, you know what, that's not fair for me to be munching on a hamburger, right? And you'd be sitting there eating grass, you know? So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it with you. So I did, except I had like this case of 36 Pepsi. <laughs> Now, Pepsi comes from the nectar of God, <laughs> right? It is like the most wonderful stuff in the world. Like, like, like if, if, if you're thirsting to death, grab Pepsi. Uh, it won't dehydrate you, but at least you'll die happy. You know what I mean? And so like, I like to squirt a lemon in it. So, but I had this 36, and I was like, you know, I had like 24 left. I was like, I'll tell you what. I won't do sugar, and I'll quit Pepsi, too, but I'm going to milk this, right? I'm going to wean myself off. Well, last weekend, I got to the end of it, and I drank my last Pepsi, and I sobbed over that. 
And then I mourned for like three days. And you know, in the mourning process, there's a part where you get mad, right? Wednesday, I hit mad. And so I'm driving to church to the, uh, at the rodeo grounds, and Linda's with me. And we had to stop and get some, some pellets for the pellet stove at, at the co-op. And as we're going down the sidewalk, I'm, I'm grumpy. I'm th- I was thinking before I got there, man, I'm glad Christmas don't start yet because, like, I'm just not in the yuletide mood, you know. <laughs> and so, so um, I, instead of being like Buddy the Elf, I'd be more like the Grinch. You know, so we're driving down and on the sidewalk is Santa and his wife. Now, see, I know Santa. I used to do his reindeer's feet. That was a fake. Number one, that just kind of made me mad. So so Linda's like, look, there's Santa, there's Santa. And I was like, that's not Santa. And she honks and she honks. She scared him. Right. And his wife. And they're like. Like, just not like, real Santa doesn't get scared. That was a fake, you know, <laughs> right? So she's driving down there, and I was like, that's not the real Santa. That's an... She's like, stop it. And I was like, no. So I roll down the window, and I'm leaning out the window. Hey, you're not the real Santa. Let me pull your beard. And he just turns, and he starts walking. <laughs> you know, like, you know, so I scared him, right? I'm pretty sure he'll never come back. But the problem is, is like I'm losing a little weight. So, like, my pants are loose. So Linda was trying to grab my belt buckle. And so I was leaning out, and I was like, quit, you're going to get my britches plumbed down, and then I'm going to be hanging out the window and not going to be able to get in, and they're going to call the police or something. <laughs> so it was quite the ordeal. So, but see, weird stuff happens when we get tired. Right? Weird stuff happens when, when we're not in the right mindset and so that's why it's important for us to keep our thoughts focused not on what's going on around us but on who God is and there's a there's a theme that's coming through this service already in the music you know what that theme is it's victory right God has given us the victory we are not fighting for victory but we are fighting from victory and there's a big difference a lot of times we're fighting oh i want to have victory and i want to have this and when god has already given all things we need for life and godliness that's good news right so we're not trying to get to a place of victory we're living out of a place of victory we're not trying to rest we're living out of a place to rest and so we can sit there and we can see the things hitting all around us. And, and in this season, I want to encourage you, don't believe everything you see and hear. Amen. Right? Because there's so much lying going on, so much deception, but there's a truth that's happening. And there's some good things that are happening. And in the word, it does, remember what I was talking about? In some things, God works for the good of... No, in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. If we'll just trust Him. But we get to make that choice. Because I'm telling you, there's victory ahead. Those places where it looks like we're defeated, I'm telling you, there's victory ahead. Keep your eyes on what God's saying. Keep your eyes on His promises because He will get us through. And when he gets done, we'll be in a better place than we ever dreamed. Amen? Amen. Everything that's happening to us is going to be a blessing. Right? Everything, like the bad stuff, right? It may not seem it, but it will turn into a blessing if we just trust God. Now, we can't do it on our own. Right? We can only do it through Jesus and through His, His power and through... His love and through His peace. Amen? So, I think you guys are studying Ephesians, but I'm going to read a little bit from Ephesians. Is that all right? Right? So God always gives us, gives us a promise without the curse. God's protection plan is through the atonement of Jesus' blood and through nothing else. 
Our victory comes through Jesus and His finished work at the cross. And if we rely on anything else, we're standing on sinking sand. You hear what I'm talking about? And so, so we can trust what God says and trust what God's doing in, in our life if we will just rest. This is a season of rest. Now, rest means we work out of rest, right? We, we work out of that position of resting in that finished work, and now we can step out and we can make a difference and we can impact this world. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now, this is a little different than a lot of people approach things, right? Because he's saying, live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Again, he's talking about living from victory, not trying to attain victory. Living out of your righteousness, not trying to be righteous in your own. Do you guys hear what I'm talking about? And so everything in, in our life that we get from God, we've received by grace, through faith. It's a gift of God that we cannot earn in any way, shape, or form. And so as we get these gifts, then we can live out of this. He says, as i freely given, also you can freely have you received. Well, how can we give if we ain't got nothing? Do you hear what I'm saying? So, so it, if we're bankrupt and we're, we're sad and we're discouraged and we're down, how can we encourage other people? Do you hear what I'm saying? How can we lift them up? So we don't get our, our happiness from the outside world. We get our joy from the inside. And that's where the fruit of the Spirit comes in. Amen? It says, says, a life worthy. That's what I want to live, a life worthy of, of who He is. What's that? It's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. A life worthy of what He is and of who He is. Because he's, he's so awesome. And to know Him and to have a relationship with Him. And when I do, and to know him better, right? It's like, I've been married almost 21 years, right? But I don't say, I, like last night, we were able to, I was able to take Linda to dinner, and then we went shopping at Hobby Lobby. Woohoo, what a great <laughs> date, right? But it was, it was fun, right? Because Linda loves Hobby Lobby. Do you know that's a Christian organization? I had no clue. She, I was like... Anyway, I discovered it by the music and all the Christian stuff in there, right? <laughs> but anyway, so we go there, and, and um, then we come home and watch the movie, and just hang out. But you know something? Even though I already have a relationship with her, even though we're already married, I still pursue more of a relationship with her. There's still things about her. That, that I want to learn and that I want to know. And she already, I'm pretty simple. She already knows everything about me. <laughs> right? But there's a relationship that goes on. And a growing. And I want to grow in Him and grow in His promises and grow in what He said. And know that I have those promises. And every one of those promises are yes and amen. Remember we were talking about Galatians. And I love Galatians where he said... And you're free, and he, he um, freed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. But then he freed us to all the blessings of Abraham. So he didn't just free us from the curse, but he freed us to the blessings. Do you hear, what's, what, hear what I'm saying? He, he didn't just take away the curse and say, there you are, you're on your own. He's like, now watch this. I'm just going to not just take this away, but look, I'm going to drop some blessings and some stuff in your life that you're going to need to get through. And that's good news. So we can count on that, right? But it says this, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Now, what does it mean to be humble? This is my definition to be humble is, where I'm totally submitted to God, believing what God says above what I say. 
And here's where we get to make a choice. Do we humble ourselves and say, God, your word is above anything that I think, feel, or see? Or here. Is your word and your opinion more important than any news pundit or, or any, any preacher or your neighbor or, or your cousin? Right? God, is your word bigger and more important? Because what we put um, an emphasis in, on is what we drive towards. So when I humble myself and, and I humble myself one day and I said, Father, I'm lost. I, I'm on my way to hell. Please forgive me of my sin. And I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't on my way to hell. I was in hell. Save me. I can't do it on my own. Do you know what I did? I humbled myself. Right? The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. So it's something that I get to do a lot. Right? Because I'm a cowboy. <laughs> and we're stubborn. You guys hear what I'm talking about? i got to continually like, humble myself and say, no, it's not... Like, because I want to grab a hold of something and, and twist its horns and flip it over and say, there you go, right? <laughs> right? That's just our attitude, right? But then I'm like, not my will, but yours. What do you say about the situation, right? Instead of roping and tying it, you're like, drive it to the chute, right? Doctor it that way, right? But being humble and gentle being patient, bearing with one another in love. The true mark of how we handle these times will be in how we love people we disagree with. Right? We don't have to agree with people, but the Bible commands us to love people. We don't have to be muzzled. We can speak the truth, but we speak the truth in love instead of cutting people down like we're shooting them with a machine gun. Right? Because that's not how, how God works. Now, Jesus was not a wimp, right? He called the, he called the Pharisees by what they were. And so, so we could learn some stuff from Jesus too, man. He had, a six, he had a, one of those six guns and he knew how to shoot it. <laughs> right? So there's a time where we can say the truth in love. Right? But we don't cut people down to where they can't be picked back up. Amen? Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. You know that word peace in, in Hebrew is a word called shalom. And it doesn't just mean a lack of war, but it means a completeness. Right? There's a completeness in unity. There's a nothing missing, nothing broken. And, and we can keep that, that unity in the spirit uh, of the peace that was bought by Jesus. Because the Bible says that He is our peace that breaks down every wall. Right? There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. For one Lord, one faith, one baptized baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, through all and in all. But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. You know how much grace you get? As much as you need. Some of us need a whole lot more. Right? Ask Linda. I need a whole lot. Right? That's why it says he ascended on high and led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lowest earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. <laughs> oh, man, like sometimes the Bible says stuff that just like makes my mind go... Like, am I the only one? Now listen to this. You, we can read through it and, and, and not really see it, but, but he says, in order to fill the whole 
universe. Now, I don't know a lot about ast- astronomy. Is it astronomy or... Ast- yeah, right? Or astrology, but, right? Which is probably a good thing, right? But I know that the universe, there's no end to. Like, they can't find an end to the universe. But he's saying he's filled the whole universe. You know what he's saying? I know way more than you boys do. I already been there. Like, we can, can't even get to the places that he's at and has already been. And to think of that and then to think that he can't deal with our problems or deal with our battles. No wonder that's the reason he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. I love this, and I'm so thankful for Will and Jim both because they both do a great job. You know, they're not just in being an elders, but in teaching and in, in equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. Thank you, guys. I, pre- I appreciate serving with them so much. But God's given us these gifts, right? And the reason He gave them to us is to, is to prepare. The, in the Greek, it says to equip. And that equip... Is, is like a word that means like to fix a broken leg. To repair, to make complete. Right? And that's what we get to do when we share God's Word. What are we doing? We're washing you with the water of the Word. Right? You're, you're becoming complete in Jesus. And that's our job is, is, is to not um, do it for you, but, but to show you how to do it. Actually, even better than that, to get out of your way and let the Holy Spirit lead you in how to live. Because we mess up all... Well, not them. Sorry, I'm not talking to you guys. I mess up all the time. More than most. Right? But it's God's grace. But I'm learning as I walk to follow the Holy Spirit. And as you learn to follow the Holy Spirit, then you'll be able to walk in the right places. Because the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Amen? Okay. Until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Whew! That ain't going to happen on our own. That only happens, but we are in the fullness of Christ. Not because of who we are, but because of what He's done. I know this is radical. I actually believe the Word of God. Right? I was woke up this morning and I was reading the Constitution. Anybody ever read the Constitution? It's kind of like the Bible. Like I want to know what, where it says. I, like, I feel like Galatians is kind of my Constitution and takes me to my Bill of Rights in, in Deuteronomy where it says I'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. And then it tells me what... I'm free to, but then it also tells me what I'm free from, which includes everything. Like literally, it's even a spot in there that says, all these sicknesses that you don't even know about yet, I covered them too. <laughs> right? So like I was reading the Constitution, I was reading the Bill of Rights, because there's like the Bible scholars, don't listen to us, find out for yourself. Go to the Word of God. Uh, we, if, we're not, if, if I'm not doing my job, if pastors aren't doing their job, and we're not equipping you guys to be able to search this stuff out for yourself, then we're failing as pastors. You hear what I'm saying? So, so think for yourselves. Find God's Word, but also study stuff like that. Like in this time, in this season, know what the Constitution says. Know what the Bill of Rights say. Because it's critical and it's important. Rather than listening to some constitutional scholar that's telling you the Constitution means this, like I believe it's like the Bible. Not in that it's holy like that, but then it's direct and it's true like that when it says that the, that, um, the government shall not infringe upon rights. Right? Not a freedom from them from us, but them a freedom, but, but our freedom for them to, to be telling us what to do. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? And I feel like there's many rights that are being stepped on, and I believe there's coming a time when we're going to have to stand. Right? Speak the truth in love. Don't know that we're there yet, but someday, like you're like, well, where do you read that? Have you ever read Revelation? (laughs) Someday there's some people that are going to not take the mark of the beast, right? They're going to say, no, I ain't going to. I ain't going to do that, right? What made people great was, was when they follow Jesus and they follow what He's going to do. But know your rights. Know what God's saying. Not, not, not what God's saying. Well, God was speaking through them too. These rights were given to us by God. It's written in that, right? So, so watch that. Don't live in defeat. We have victory. We have promises not just from God, but in this country too. And, and we can stand up for those and, and um, use our voices for good and not evil in love. Right? Now I'm meddling, ain't I? <laughs> I just think there's a time where we got to stand up and say something. And I think now's the time. And so, where I can at least say find our rights and stand on our rights and stand as Americans too. Amen? Now as the word of God I love these promises because it, here it goes on and says this until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ then we will no longer be infants. Now listen to this. Tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head that is Christ. From Him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. What's he saying? We have a root and we have a foundation and we're standing in God and standing in His truth. The wind's blowing. Like you ever see, the Bible says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So we have the mind of Christ and our mind is fixed on Him and it's fixed on His promises. And now we step out and we start living out of that victory. And as we're living out of that victory, guess what happens? We start seeing His victory come through us. We have the hope of the world. And His name's Jesus. And He's here to flow through us and to work through us. And we can do it in love. Amen? And now's the time for me to shut up because I went too long. So thank you, Father. Father, we just pray for peace. Peace in our lives and peace in every situation and and just peace in our country and peace in our state and peace on this planet, Father. Thank you that that we have the opportunity to excel in these times in spite of what it looks like or the world says. That you are for us and that we ain't even gotten started yet. So I'm so excited, Father. Thank you for that. Keep everyone safe, Father. Protect them. And and, um, bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.